This is serious business. This is physics, and I'm just following my beat, man. And today, the drummer is beating out. Thor news is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. I said, oh, all right. Yeah, I'd like to do it again. And uh, by that, I mean make videos. We're talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a good day. And I'm talking about brown dwarfs. I was doing neutron star research. But the universe was like brown dwarfs all up in your face. Galice 229A Sun Baby. Baby. We're getting our daily science. It's Science Daily. And I'm Thor Thor News. So let's go. Astronomers. Identify purest, most massive brown dwarf. Wow, I didn't think astronomers dabble in terms like purest, good, evil, purest. All right, March 24th, 2017, source the Royal Astronomical Society. So this comes from the king of astronomy, y'all. Wait, that's me. Summary, astronomers have identified a record-breaking brown dwarf, a star too small for nuclear fusion, asterisk, I don't believe that, those things confuse, bro, with the purest composition and the highest mass yet known. Wow, this sounds like the Neo of brown dwarfs, or like the second coming of Christ of brown dwarfs, maybe. Did I go too far? Okay. Purest and the heaviest? That sounds like one heck of a hero. The object, known as SDSSJOSDSSJ0104 plus 1535, is a member of the so-called halo. What? Is a member of the so-called halo, dash, dash. The outermost reaches of our galaxy, made up of the most ancient stars yeah because there's one thing you know if, if you're gonna be talking about an article where astronomers real astronomers like the real deal astronomers they're gonna be talking about brown dwarfs that are really far away as like a rule if you're gonna talk about brown dwarfs can't be anywhere within 4.4 light years of earth <laughs> you know what so it's like yeah this thing is the very edge of our galaxy can you find brown dwarfs near us no we cannot all right it's like if you couldn't find any oranges in America, and you're like, no, but we found pictures of oranges in Africa. Maybe that analogy's horrible. That's okay. My brain's fuzzy. That's okay. Thank God the science has been told to me, so I don't have to question it. I can just read it to you. A hacker's messing with my brain. Dyson purifiers, Dyson spheres, an international team of astronomers has identified a record breaking brown dwarf, a star too small for a nuclear fusion, with the purest composition and the highest mass yet known. The object known as that name is a member of the so-called halo, the outermost reaches of our galaxy, made up of the most ancient stars. The scientists report the discovery in monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. Ancient stars? You mean like Fatty Arbuckle? Sorry, I win karma points, strangely enough, every time I mention Fatty Arbuckle. Was he framed? I don't know, maybe. I just gotta get my, make my Fatty Arbuckle fan contingent happy. Brown dwarfs are intermediate between planets and fully-fledged stars, or they're just like Jupiter. Asterisk? Asterisks. Somebody said there's two S's in asterisks. I was like, that is crazy. Their mass is too small for full nuclear fusion of hydrogen to helium, but they can convert sugar into being tired. So, in a lot of ways, brown dwarfs are like me. <laughs> I shouldn't be this happy. Maybe my videos suck if I'm this happy. With a consequent release of energy. <sighs> to take place, comma. But they are usually significantly more massive than planets. And mass is not weight. To this day, we still don't really know what mass is. I mean, they do. I don't. I'm still trying to understand. It's like, I don't know, man. I have to do a video on what mass is. But it'd be for adults. There would be a lot of cussing in that video. Located 750 light years away in the constellation of Pisces. SDSSJ0104 plus 1535 is made of gas that is around 250 times purer than the sun. So it consists of more than 99.99% of hydrogen and helium, estimated to have formed around 10 billion years ago. Measurements also suggest that it has a mass equivalent to 90 times that of Jupiter. Dun, dun, dun. Which means that, like, if you could fit one Jupiter in your pocket, wait, which means if you could fit one Jupiter in your pocket, you could only fit 90 of, no, reverse that. Okay, that's all totally wrong. Its gravitational influence is 90 times greater than that of Jupiter. Is that correct? I don't know, real scientists confirm this shit. Thank you. It was previously not known if brown dwarfs could form from such primordial gas. Oh my god. You guys don't know what forms from shit. There, I said it. And the discovery points the way to a larger, undiscovered population of extremely pure brown dwarfs 
from our galaxy's ancient past. I'm confused by this article. Why are they pure again? Excuse me, sir. What makes this the purest of brown dwarves? I still don't get that. And what? I, I'm in the mood for brown sugar. You ever take vanilla ice cream and then sprinkle brown sugar on it? It's good. Well, weirdly enough, ch brown sugar does not go with the Hershey syrup. Oh my God. Maybe Earth is not under attack from one Nibiru, but it's a whole population of Nibirus. What if Nibiru is just here for a dance party? Research team was led by Dr. Zhang Hua Zhang of the Institute of Astrophysics in the Canary Islands. He said, we really didn't expect to see brown dwarfs that are this pure. Having found one, though, often suggests a much larger hitherto, 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 undiscovered population. I'd be very surprised if there aren't many more similar objects out there waiting to be found or waiting to find us. You know what I'm saying? SDS. SJ104 plus 1535 has been classified as an L type ultra subdwarf. Oh, it's an ultra subdwarf. Using its optical and near infrared spectrum, measure P measured using the European Southern Observatory's very large telescope. The classification was based on a scheme very recently established by Dr. Zhang. All those scientists always scheming. Can you trust them? Can you trust their brown dwarf science? They're schemers, man. Okay, so I still don't get why is it so pure or made it pure? It had the purest pixels they'd ever seen. Man, purest pixels. Uh, man, can you imagine if pure pixels came in edible form? I don't even know what that means. Yeah, okay, so somebody explain to me, why is this thing pure? All right, brown dwarfs, they're crazy. Just like me and you. Peace out. God bless everyone. See here, this is where I was looking at Super Jupiter. Neutron star research all up in your face. That damn platypus. Baryonic. Talking about baryonic. And the dark matter search. Don't make me laugh. I should make you wear shorts every day of your life. That would be like a dictatorship. White dwarfs, sub dwarfs, dwarfs, sub giants, giants, bright giants, super giants, hyper giants. Science needs to expand its vocabulary. Jumping all over the place, making things harder for myself in the future. Whoa. Uranus has a moon? Uranus has a couple. Oh, uh, I should do more science more often. I'm surprised. I think Uranus and Neptune have a ton more. They just haven't looked. I've mean, maybe been there. Water in the gas phase. I believe we call that a shark. A true story. It's a dwarf shark. Oh my god. Science. <laughs> Did you just shark? Yeah, but you ain't got a war. Baby, it was a dwarf shark. <laughs> Remember, Planet X rules. If it's red, it can kill you. If it's blue, it can't hurt you. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing I'm, I'm talking about hurricanes. Hurricanes and brown dwarfs. It's like brown dwarf day. Brown dwarf sun baby hurricane. And sharts. Oh, heavy science.